Hello everyone, welcome back to 3 News Now. It's Monday, August 10th. I'm Stephanie Haney. Thank you for being here to get caught up on everything you need to know here in Northeast Ohio with our top stories from WKYC.com and our WKYC app. Hope you all had an incredible weekend. We definitely had beautiful weather here in Northeast Ohio over the weekend. I personally went camping with my brother and sister-in-law and Harry Winston the Puggle had his first experience on a kayak. It was also my first experience on a kayak, but Winston was a pro. You can see some pictures I shared of that on my Twitter account, also on my Instagram page at underscore Stephanie Haney. And if you need a little moment of zen today, I also shared a video of Shenango Lake. It is 33 seconds of just campground bliss, and I would recommend it. So you can find that on my Twitter account as well if you want to start your Monday off with a nice relaxing tone. We're going to talk about some interesting developments that have happened just now and over the weekend. We have breaking news right now. The Big Ten has reportedly voted to cancel the 2020 football season. We'll give you some more details on that in just a moment. We're also going to take a look at some executive actions taken by President Donald Trump over the weekend, what that could mean for unemployment benefits. Also, what Summit County Public Health is saying about schools restarting in the fall, what their recommendation is. We'll give you a weekend recap of the COVID-19 numbers, what happened over the weekend. Also take a look at what happened with Cleveland baseball over the weekend in Chicago and pitcher Zach Playsack. We'll tell you what happened there. And it's National Lazy Day. So we'll let you know how you can share what you're doing or not doing to celebrate National Lazy Day. Okay, first up, that breaking news. The Big Ten has reportedly voted to cancel the 2020 football season. This is according to the Detroit Free Press. The Big Ten's presidents reportedly voted 12 to 2 in favor of canceling the season. According to Dan Patrick, the holdouts were Iowa and Nebraska. Those were the only two schools who voted in favor of moving forward with the upcoming 2020 football season. This is weeks after there's been lots of speculation about whether it's possible for a college football season to move forward while we are dealing with the COVID-19 pandemic. Now, previously, the Big Ten had announced that it would only be playing conference games. It would only have a 10-game schedule. And then that schedule came out last week. But when that schedule came out, Ohio State University Athletic Director Gene Smith said that releasing that schedule was only a step. It was not a guarantee that a 2020 football season would move forward and now it appears that athletic director gene smith did sort of have a premonition of what was coming because now the detroit free press is reporting that the big 10 has voted not to have a 2020 football season on saturday the mid-american conference said that it was postponing fall sports including football until the spring we'll have more on this this afternoon as well we'll be bringing in our three new sports analyst ben axelrod to talk more about what's happening with the big 10 and the college football world in general now let's take a look at some actions that president donald trump took over the weekend related to unemployment aid he issued an executive action on saturday that would extend federal unemployment benefits but it's not actually clear under the Constitution that he can do this. So that's something that could potentially be challenged. President Donald Trump made a comment that if this is challenged, it's going to be challenged by people who don't necessarily want people to get payment or support at this time. But it's not clear that he can actually constitutionally do this. So it remains a question. So let's discuss what would happen if he can move forward. He ordered an extension of unemployment benefits of up to $400 a week. Now, this is not strictly federal money, though. In the action, he called on the states to provide 25% of that money. So it would be $300 coming from the federal government and $100 coming from the states. In many states, states are already asking for federal support to meet their already existing unemployment obligations in paying those benefits out to the many people who are currently on unemployment. Ohio is one of those states who has asked for federal loans in order to be able to meet the demands of paying unemployment claims here in the state of Ohio. President Donald Trump had been asked at a news conference how many governors had actually signed on to this plan, and what he said was, if they don't, they don't, that's up to them. So it's not exactly clear at this time either how that would work, whether it's required for the state to sign on to provide that one additional $100 or whether it's not required. And if the state doesn't sign on, then it would just be an additional $300 from the federal government. So there are a lot of questions 
about this action that was issued by the president. Some are saying, some political experts are saying that this may just be an effort to get Democrats and Republicans to agree and finally pass that forthcoming stimulus package. If this does take effect, it could be months before this cycles through the system and people actually see these payments from their unemployment benefits. So we'll be keeping a close eye on that. Now here in Ohio, Summit County is recommending that all schools start remotely this fall. Summit County Public Health cited the substantial rise in COVID-19 cases throughout the county as well as Centers for Disease Control evidence that reopening school buildings could cause that number to spike even higher. According to officials in Summit County, the average number of COVID-19 cases per day has nearly doubled. At the start of July, it was 24. Now it's 45 reported cases of COVID-19 per day in Summit County. And although healthy children are, according to experts, at a lower risk for developing complications from COVID-19, they are not immune and they do go home to people who are not young, healthy people. They may be spending time with older parents or older grandparents or older relatives in general. And so that is definitely a factor. 271 of Summit County's more than 3,500 cases of COVID-19 are people under the age of 20 at this time. That's according to Summit County officials. Summit County Public Health says that it's investigated multiple potential outbreaks as well that have already been linked to sports practices. So for all of these reasons, Summit County is recommending remote learning for all schools in Summit County at this time. Now, it's not in order. Individual districts are still able to make their own determinations when it comes to this, but that's what Summit County Public Health is currently recommending. Akron Public Schools decided on its own that it will be restarting remotely, and they made that announcement two weeks ago. Summit County Public Health has said they'll continue to monitor trends and they will offer guidelines as to what should happen. But again, they are only guidelines because at this point it is up to the individual districts in order to make that determination. Now let's take a look at the numbers for COVID-19 and how those changed over the weekend. Over the weekend, Ohio hit over 100,000 reported cases of COVID-19. That's dating all the way back to March 9th when we first learned about it being here in the state of Ohio and the U.S hit over 5 million reported cases. That's according to Johns Hopkins University. They hit over 5 million cases for the first time here across the entire country. Now keep in mind when I tell you these numbers that Ohio Department of Health confirmed to me that numbers are lower over the weekend because some labs aren't open and some hospitals report less frequently over the weekend. So keep that in mind as we talk about these numbers. There were 2,173 new reported COVID-19 cases between Saturday and Sunday, bringing our total of reported cases now to 100,848 total known cases of COVID-19 that we've seen here in the state of Ohio. Now, the Ohio Department of Health says that about 78% of those cases are presumed to be recovered, so about 78,400 35 cases are presumed to be recovered of those over 100,000 cases now. That means that 22% are active at this point. Over the weekend in Ohio, we saw 17 new deaths reported, bringing that total now to 3,669. And when we look at the U.S. numbers over the weekend, we did break 5 million cases. There are now 5,053,123 reported cases of COVID-19 in the U.S., and there have been 163,047 deaths related to COVID-19 in the U.S., according to Johns Hopkins University. Here in Ohio, we do have some good news. The hospital bed occupancy rate has gone down. It's gone down 3% from Saturday, so the current occupancy rate is 68%. So that means that 32% of hospital beds are available for people who need them in the state of Ohio, whether that's for COVID-19 or whether that's for something else. Now let's talk a little bit more about sports and what happened in Chicago over the weekend with Cleveland pitcher Zach Plasek. He was sent home after going out with friends in Chicago, which is against new COVID-19 protocols in Major League Baseball. So he went out following the win on Saturday over the Chicago White Sox and the organization found out and they immediately decided to send him back to Cleveland. So the organization got him a car so they wouldn't be on a plane with teammates in the event that he did actually contract COVID-19. Playsack apologized in a statement that came out yesterday after Cleveland beat the White Sox in 10 innings. Playsack said, I realize I made a poor choice to leave the hotel, which broke protocols and could have endangered other people. 
pitcher Shane Bieber said, we love Zach, we support him, but he screwed up. We're going to handle this in-house and we'll see where it goes from here. Now, Playsack wasn't expected to be in the rotation this week with two off days for Cleveland, so it's definitely an interesting time for him to be sitting out of the ball club. It's not known if Playsack has been tested since breaking the code of conduct and going out in Chicago on Saturday, but he will be isolated from the team and can't take part in team activities until he tests negative for COVID-19 twice. We're not sure when those tests will be taking place, but he does have to test negative twice in order to rejoin the team for those activities. Today is National Lazy Day. And in looking this up in true lazy fashion, the creator of National Lazy Day actually has not made themselves known and has not released any information about the origin of National Lazy Day or why it happens on August 10th, but we do know today is National Lazy Day. And what we would really love, as much as we hate to ask you to do something on National Lazy Day, we want you to share some photos and videos of you being lazy and how you are celebrating this day with us. So you can do that a number of ways. You can text a photo to 216-344-3300, or you can post a photo on our Facebook post that has this story about National Lazy Day, or you can send a photo in through the WKYC app. All you have to do is tap on near me in the bottom right corner as soon as the app opens after you get that greeting, and then you can send in the photo right there. We might use it at 5 p.m. on What's New and also online. Also, I wanted to break something down for you as well. As I tell you each day that you can watch What's New and any of our broadcasts live in the WKYC app. We got a question over Facebook about how actually to do that, so I want to make sure you know. When you open the WKYC app, you'll get that greeting, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, whatever it might be. And then when you look at the bottom, it's right next to where it says near me. It's the second option to the left. It says watch. So just tap on watch, and then if we have a live broadcast happening at that time, you'll see that at the very top. You can tap on that and bring it full screen, and you'll be able to watch whatever we're broadcasting over the air in the WKYC app. So make sure you download that. It's for free on iOS and Android devices. You can get that in the Apple App Store or in the Google Play Store. That's it for your early update for Monday, August 10th. I'll be back here at 3 p.m. as soon as we get those updated numbers in from the Ohio Department of Health. And also we'll have Ben Axelrod with us to talk more about what's happening with the Big Ten and the reported cancellation of the football season. I'll see you all back there then. I'm Stephanie Haney.